Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. It's the Mike Force Podcast. On this episode, we're talking about the grid, the infrastructure, national security concerns, and uh, tweets. Uh, if you're listening to this on podcast, uh, make sure you leave a review because that helps us out, out a little bit. And if um, you are, make sure you migrate over to YouTube where you could subscribe and hit the no- notification tab to get alerted when I drop this because it's rando. I drop it a couple times a week. Um, but make sure you leave your comments and feedback below as well. That's what's cool about YouTube is you could watch my face and also see the things that I'm doing with my hands, drinking my water. But you can also interact, leave your feedback in the comments, which we do read. Um, let's kick it off with a tweet. The New York Times opinion piece called NY2... Oh, <laughs> that's New York Times. When you take an acronym of something, it's like NYTO opinion. It's a New York Times opinion, um, NYT opinion on Twitter. They say... The AR-15 has become a talisman for some right-wing politicians and voters. That's a particularly disturbing trend at a time when violent political rhetoric and actual political violence in the United States are rising, writes the editorial board. So political violence in the United States is rising from right-wing politicians and voters. That's what this is saying. Um, that's not true. We, we, you literally just made this up. Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a dude breaking into the house of Nancy Pelosi and attacking her husband? Because that dude lived in California and was a left-wing extremist. By all accounts and information that I've seen reported by the media. Actually, very, very mildly reported by the media. Like, national media won't pick up that story and all the details about the bad the bad guy because the bad guy is a left-wing extremist um it says opinion america's toxic gun culture and there's a picture um there's about 50 shotgun shells is the picture about the ar-15 one just to educate you if you're not educated the ar-15 is a semi-automatic rifle it's used in sports and hunting it's a var- varmint rifle, guys. It's a two two three point two two three inches, or if you use the metric system, 5.56 by 45 millimeter. It is a very small projectile that's hopped up. More active shooters use semi-automatic pistols than AR-15s. Pistols than AR-15s. Okay, so l- before we come out and start having an opinion especially as the New York Times, how about we just come to the table with some understanding, some basic education? So when you talk about AR-15 and America's toxic gun culture, that's not, that's not my words. That's the words of the opinion piece. And you have a line of, I am assuming, a New York Times subcontracted photographer who's like, I'm going to win an award for this. This is it. Lots of different colors and the beautiful... Uh, backside of those cartridges of those AR-15s. Those are, those are shotgun shells. Those are shotgun shells, which are legal everywhere. I think even in California, which is surprising that they haven't banned shotguns at this point. Um, anyways, that, I, I had to kick it off with that because it's just so crazy. But that's the times that we're living in. You know, Elon Musk was held as a hero of the left because of his electric vehicle called the Tesla, made in America, changing our future by innovating electric vehicles. And man, he was the hero. He was the he was the climate change hero for the left. They just had a summit on electric vehicles at the White House. And guess who wasn't invited? That's right. Elon Musk wasn't invited to that. All the other car dealerships were, but Elon Musk wasn't. Um, Alyssa Milano, I don't know if you know that name. Uh, you shouldn't, because the last time she was kind of famous when she was a kid on Who's the Boss? That's the last time I watched her in the 80s. She's got an opinion, but she put out in the opinion, I think she even tweeted this, that she was disgusted with Elon Musk. I'm paraphrasing here, but um, she didn't like him. And because of that, uh, she's selling her Tesla and getting a Volkswagen because she wants to p- support a real company. Because she thinks Elon Musk is a white supremacist. She puts that in the tweet. 
so um, does she not know the history of Ferdinand Porsche and Volkswagen, known as the people's car? Yes, that's right. Volkswagen before World War II, and we took possession of factories, including Volkswagen. Um, that was started by Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime. That's, that's literally the car of white supremacy. If you had to take a car and make it the branded vehicle of white supremacy, literally, fascist and white supremacist, that was the car, the Volkswagen. So congratulations, Alyssa Milano, for being, being really dumb and incompetent. Um, I'm not surprised by this, guys. You know, I don't typically pray. I, one, I don't talk about my religion because it's very private to me. I know a lot of religious people who shove it down people's throats. But God and my relationship with him, that's between me and him. I also don't pray because I want to win a sports game or because I want more money in my pocket. Like, I save prayers that are specifically for other people mostly. I'm not praying for myself. But I actually prayed for the country last night for the first time, I, I think in the history of my life. I think the last time I did that was probably when I was in my 20s during 9-11. So if I'm praying in the shower because I'm just so distraught with what's going on in this nation, not being inundated, by the way, just with just media, like I'm digging in the weeds. I'm not just watching highlight reels from, from uh, different platforms of media. I'm really concerned about this country. So should you, by the way. Let's talk about that concern and how it migrates into national security. You would think a country invested times $40 billion putting it in to Ukraine, which we don't have a strategy. We don't have specific policy and understanding of what we're doing there, just besides dumping money into it. Um, you think we would have a plan and actually invest in our own security and infrastructure. Right now, the media is trying to twist this Moore County North Carolina uh, power grid um, attack where people shot at the power grid. It's a power station and shut down the power to 45,000 people for up to five days. I got a buddy, Tom from Eagles and Angels, who didn't have power for five days. So let's just talk about that real quick. This is not new. On my Instagram, I posted a article that was written in 2014, eight years ago, about the power grid being vulnerable. It described if nine of the 55,000 power stations in America were attacked, it could shut down power to the entire nation for up to 18 months. I mean, I don't know why that information is publicly relayed in for, uh, anyway, but it's been open, open source for nearly a decade. A study was done on looking at vulnerabilities. It was classified for a period of time, and then it was released. This is not new. So what have we done about it since, I don't know, the exposure to that in 2014? Nothing. We've done nothing. 55,000 power stations exist in this country. Recently, a Silicon Valley attack showed, reported a deliberate attack against the infrastructure where they shot the cooling fins, which overheated the system. Luckily, they were able to divert it before it shut it down, but it would have shut down power to Facebook. Oh, no. Oh, no. I like how I, I talked about this on my post, and somebody was like, um, maybe a power grid shutdown for 18 months would fix 99% of the problems in our country. I, I don't agree or I don't disagree. I, I think there's something there. I mean, the dependency we have on the grid is not just on our cell phones, because your cell phone would be shut down. The cell phone infrastructure, including the data that's relayed from the tower to your phone, is dependent on electricity. A lot of them have generators and other means, but they wouldn't be able to do it long term. And so depending on where you were would determine the power that you had. Why would that be important? I don't know. Like if you use a gas station, the gas station uses a ATM debit credit card kiosk that allows you to put your card in through electricity to pump the gas. Most even rudimentary gas, gas pumps use electricity at a minimum, to pump the gas out of the fuel cell or storage tank that puts gas in your vehicle. There's rarely manual pumps in the country anywhere. I mean, you're going to have to siphon that out. Good luck with that. So how do you think the supply chain works with delivering food to the Walmart in your local backyard? 
you better have a, a coffee club subscription to Black Rebel Coffee because you're not getting it at Walmart or Bass Pro because they'll be shut down. Also, access to cash. How much cash do you have? Because you ain't using an ATM, they use electricity. And then everybody at the same time would try to be uh, trying to be access cash. Do you think the cash at that ATM machine is going to last long? It's not. It's not. Or if you get a generator at the gas station, you think that gas is going to last long at that particular gas station before the truck driver has to drive it to you? Oh, wait, he can't get gas because truck drivers use gas stations to fill their trucks as they cross country. So we're, we're dealing with a dilemma. Um, if it's in the summertime and you have food in your freezer or refrigerator, it's all going bad. Do you have a generator? You should have a minimum of a 17 kilowatt generator. Uh, Generac is the last one I had. I don't, I'm not sponsored by them, but it seemed pretty good to me. You should have a stockpile of gas, food, water, all the things. All the things. Uh, I started uh, Philcraft Everyday Water. Why did I do that? Well, I'm a big fan of aluminum and the long shelf life of water. I also thought to myself, well, I store water on my shelf. It's in plastic. I've served in the military where plastic and all the chemicals that are in plastic, I probably ingested over the course of my career. Um, But I could have this on my shelf long term. And I figured if I'm going to drink water out of an aluminum, aluminum, aluminum can, aluminum, uh, it's going to be mine. So, yeah, you need water stockpiled. You, you need all the things. How much gas right now or diesel right now do you have inside of your vehicle? You could have a $100,000 overland truck if you have a quarter of a tank. Well, good luck with that because that's your capability. All 100 miles of it. So 55,000 55, power grids. Um, or power stations throughout the country, only nine. I read a report that only 20, let's just say nine to 20, need to be attacked. Well, how easy is it to shut down the power? I don't know. I think a bunch of rednecks in North Carolina shot out the power grid because they they wanted to shut down the power. Now, you could politicize it any way you want. That's what literally happened. And they said these experts knew exactly what they were doing. I mean, they shot a gun at a power station. Have you seen the power stations in this country? I travel frequently throughout throughout the country, and they're everywhere, and they're not secure. I mean, they have most of them have low fences, and you could throw a rock and hit it. So is it vulnerable? Absolutely it is. In fact, I think out of all the things that were vulnerable to attack, water, the clean water infrastructure, which is the same um, regulation, as far as security vulnerabilities, we're dealing with the same thing on the electricity side. Those two components, water, it, tainted water, poop in your water will contaminate and shut down your water for weeks. It's already ha- It just happened in Houston, Texas, where they had a boil water mandate for even the water they were showering with. So it wasn't like non-potable. It was like, you can't let this stuff touch you if you don't boil it. Well, that's a problem. Why is it a problem? Is because we are weak and vulnerable. In 2003, because of software and human error, we had 45 million people shut down in the northeast of this country without power. Well, it seems like it's not a big deal. It wasn't for the people that were affected for two hours, but for the people that were affected for four days, including the people in hospice, assisted living, the healthcare system, 100 people died in 2003. During that, uh, during that uh, grid shutdown. Have you ever seen a power grid go down during a winter storm or during the winter or summer? Dozens of elderly people pass away because not everybody has uh, access to everything and is living their best life. So it is a vulnerability. I mean, social media by itself is a vulnerability because it, just the nature of the algorithm is det- destroying our country. Uh, I, I always like quoting this Hamza kid off of YouTube. I, I like his content, and he talks about weak men. If you spend all day playing video games and on social media, look, I called out a personal friend on the podcast who had 25 hours in a week on his Instagram. 25 hours. I had employees that I fired because they spent so much time on social media, they couldn't even work or get stuff done. I mean, 25 hours on social media. That's 
That's a lot of time from somebody who didn't manage social media at the time. That's four hours a day on social media. That is a lot of time. So what are you doing? You're becoming weaker because the men who spend time on social media actually think they're living their best life because they're getting the same dopamine from living their best life. So when you go on to your porn app and you have access to all those women and you think, yeah, biologically, like the primal ancestral sense in you is like, man, why would I go out? Like the incentive was I had to crush this to plant the seed and evolve my circumstance and evolve my DNA and my genetics. I did that. Mission accomplished. Let's get to the video game. You are destroying your life. You are destroying your life. It's why um, men are emotionally charged on social media. I mean, I got guys sliding in my DMs trying to attack me for something they read from some loser that is telling lies. I mean, trying to accumulate their own following because they're hurting in market. They don't know how to market. So how do they market? They become toxic. And then these people are following that, and they're so weak, they slide in my DMs. That's the society we live in. So do you have to attack us and our infrastructure in order to collapse or destroy this um, country? You don't. You kind of just let the algorithm take its course. Uh, I saw a, um, a video yesterday where the Russian media was doing a story on the trade that we did. Guys, our administration traded a WNBA woman of color lesbian. And I say all those things because it's the political thing to say right now, because the political administration said all of those things and how impactful and powerful and special that moment was that we traded her for a warlord. Yeah, the Nick Cage movie, that was that guy. Victor. Victor Bout, Victor Boot, Victor was supporting Al-Qaeda, the Taliban um, militias that were killing people across the the world. People described him as being one of the most dangerous human beings in the world, serving half of his 25-year sentence, and we traded him for a pro basketball player, who, by the way, illegally smuggled drugs into a country and got caught. Whatever your stance is on THC, hell, I like CBD and CBN. I do it every night, but... You guys, she committed a crime, and we traded that person who actually committed a crime for an actual terrorist. Um, yeah, that's upsetting. But in the in the political rhetoric that was the Russian media, which is obviously extreme in many ways, they were saying that is America. They had no choice because that's their social position. They they didn't want to trade the Marine who served his country, who's a patriot of his country who got wrongfully accused of being a spy, we trade the WNBA player. Nancy Pelosi, the vice president, and the president came out and made it political by saying how sweet, how fitting that we are trading the WNBA lesbian woman of color basketball player at the moment in which we are passing a law for equal uh, rights for everybody who wants to get married in this country. How fitting. Uh, Look, I want all Americans to come home. But I also think we should be smart about the people that we just trade and and give away because we want Americans back. We traded her because it was political. That's the political position and the socioeconomic issues that we're dealing with today are because of that. I don't know if you guys knew this, but we're in a recession. Everybody who's a smart, intelligent economist will tell you that next year, If we haven't defined that this is a recession, we are going to be upside down in a recession. They describe it as being shallow, which is not as as impactful as like a 2008. Um, But that means it's going to be shallow and more long term. How is this translating into your lives? I I don't know. You're probably not spending as much. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not. The banks aren't giving loans because the interest rates are so freaking high. And companies like Montana Knife Company, Josh Smith, a good friend of mine, are reducing cost or reducing prices, even though they're maintaining the same cost. I'm in that same dilemma. In fact, I I told my company, because I want to help Americans and do my best, even with my own business, uh, sales are down. 
So we need to incentivize you, but also reduce costs to you. Today, um, because I put it out to my uh, C or my COO and my marketing, we are going to offer our loadout series, which is our 80, 40, 20, and our mobility bag, all the things that we uh, make for ready access to equipment. I just use the 80 liters for this duck hunt, for example, that have Philcraft survival and uh, first aid pouches attached to the inside flap of those. We're reducing those costs by 50% today. So 50%. That's all my margin, guys. I, I lose all the ability to make money, but I can get um, some inventory moving that helps my company and certainly helps the consumer because you're paying 50% off what you would typically uh, pay. So if you bought a 20 liter, it's your opportunity to buy a mobility back for 50% off and vice versa. We also are going to look at a plan to reduce training costs across the country. Like I just launched this plan, this uh, training co course called 62 with Amber. Um, this 62 course is available right now. It starts in January. It's a 12 week course where all the experts, Andy Stump, I got Andy and his wife, Leah, to be experts, subject matter experts, to educate you during this course. 62 families were taking, but it's a long-form education course. Why? I don't believe in short form. I want the long-form um, discussion. I mean, the shortest form course that we run is my tactical course, which is five hours, and I'm reducing that cost as well. I'm, I'm likely going to roll uh, into 2023, reducing the cost of that course across the nation. I'm teaching... On January 7th and 8th in Granite Falls um, near Seattle at Greg Anderson's place. Um, I'm also planning to teach in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas every single month because it is a great place to train. We got Gritter uh, Sports who's offered their facility to us, and it's indoor, guys. It's indoors. You can't beat an indoor range where we could train and get stuff done. Um, I have my last major event, which is a Phil Craft Survival Preparedness Seminar here in Heber City on the 17th before we kick off the new year. Uh, I want to wish you guys a happy holidays and a happy new year. Um, I, I, again, am going to be dropping this podcast um, uh, one to two times a week, uh, busting my ass for you. Um, I do want to get to one more headline. Um, there have been a bunch of people tragically dying of cardiac attacks or cardiac um, issues across the country, including a tragedy of a World Cup journalist who tragically passed out and died in uh, Qatar. He collapsed in, in, in Qatar. Um, why is that a thing? Look, guys, I didn't take the vaccine. Um, I'm not taking a vaccine. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. If you were in the military from the time period that I was in, or uh, period, you were taking vaccines. I mean, I had to take the, I had to take multiple vaccines that I didn't want to take because I wanted to deploy to war. I even stated, hey, I don't want anthrax in my body. So what do I got to do here? You got to take it if you want to go to war. Well, I'm weighing war over my personal health. I mean, I'm willing to risk myself in combat and get killed in combat for the country. So taking a vaccine, it's like, whatever, just give me it so I can get on to my deployment. But as a free citizen right now, where I don't work for an institution tied or tethered to the federal government, I don't want to take a vaccine. So when I see all my friends taking it because of their jobs, hey, man, you have to make a personal decision for yourself. But all the information that's coming out right now um, is not looking good. And people are suddenly shocked at this. And they're saying, what could it be? I mean, I saw an article where they were claiming that it potentially was um, it had to do with uh, um, stress, the stress of America. What? Like, yeah, the America America's stress with record bad statistics uh, up and good statistics down, but let's not pretend like cardiac issues isn't part of this. Young, healthy people, athletes especially, including this World Cup journalist, I mean, I guess the autopsy will tell, but I don't know if that's true. Um, it's pretty pretty insane, guys. We live in a, we live in crazy times. I'm just trying to hold hold us together and hold myself together, but to hold us together so we can start educating ourselves on things that are important. I mean, what what things are important right now? Self reliance. Those are more important than anything that you could do. 
If you haven't thought about investing in your own self-reliance, do that now. Not just with Philcraft, but with everything. Hit up John Lovell, Word Poet Society. You know, hit up the guys in my network, uh, Tim Kennedy, Sheepdog Response. Start training, start equipping, and start getting ready to cut the umbilical cord because even if you don't want to deliberately do that, it might happen anyway. What are you going to do when your power goes out and you just don't have an option? You're just going to have to figure it out. Well, why not plan and prepare in advance for that? Uh, lastly, I'm doing a video this Friday on my new book drop called Prepared that's releasing this June with Penguin Random House. I am honored to have been given the time, uh, afforded the opportunity to write a book and to a broad audience, not just my audience, but the broad audience. It is not a technical manual for the zombie apocalypse. It is about high-level strategy and being prepared. Uh, we're going to do a couple teasers. We're going to do the book cover tease. We're going to uh, uh, read fr excerpts from the book. Jack Carr wrote my forward for that book. I'm super excited about it. I hope you guys are as well. If you're interested in getting that book, it's actually available for pre-sale. I shouldn't pre-sell it um, because it's like six months away. I don't like it's actually seven months away. I don't like pre-selling things that are so far out, but it is available. They put it online. That's how they roll. It's available wherever books are found. I'll be doing the audible version because I have a face for radio uh, very soon. I want to say thank you. I hope you guys have a good week um, and see all the links below. Take advantage of that sale that I talked to you about 50% off all the bags that we carry. Until next time, peace out, guys.